The energy sector emits 37 billion tons of CO2 annually. Contributing to climate disasters, we are already witnessing across the globe. The transition to clean energy is already underway. We've made incredible progress. And while a lot of private companies are leading in this work, the tools we've built aren't enough to meet the demands of the climate crisis. What we do in the next decade will determine whether we succeed or fall short. Corporate clean energy investment began back around 2010, at a time when wind and solar were very expensive, and few companies thought direct purchase could be possible. Since that time, new business models have emerged, new players have entered the space, and I'm happy to say that wind and solar are being deployed at scale and around the world. In fact, in many markets, wind and solar are now the cheapest resources around, cheaper even than fossil fuels. But it's not enough. We cannot decarbonize the electric grid with wind and solar alone. We need new technologies that can supply power when the wind isn't blowing and when the sun isn't shining. We need to bring forward the next generation of clean energy technologies, like enhanced geothermal, advanced nuclear, carbon capture and storage, hydrogen, and long duration energy storage. Today, over 400 major companies have committed to reaching 100% renewable energy goals. Companies have purchased 198 gigawatts of solar and wind. That's more than the power generation capacity of countries like France, the United Kingdom, and South Korea. This work has catalyzed hundreds of billions of dollars of investment into renewable energy. This is a big deal because businesses have helped drive down costs and scale those resources to where they are today. Now, to stay on track to meet our climate targets, we need businesses to catalyze investment in the next generation of clean energy technologies. But there's a fundamental problem. These technologies are new, they are expensive, and existing models for corporate investment don't support their deployment. As head of energy market innovation at Google, my job is to help one of the world's largest companies grow their business responsibly. If we do this right, our investments can be catalytic to creating a carbon-free energy system for everyone. What I have found is that there's a fundamental disconnect between corporate clean energy investment and the engineering realities of the electric grid. If we are going to succeed in meeting our climate targets, we need to find new ways to work together. And that's what I'm here to tell you about. A brand new model, first put into action in June of 2024, that has the potential to revolutionize corporate clean energy investment. This model taps the power of collaboration between companies and utilities to accelerate the energy transition. It's technology agnostic, clean focused, and adaptable to innovation. If adopted at scale, it can unlock a future powered by clean energy on demand and around the clock. But for that to happen, we need to acknowledge that the models we've built won't get us where we need to be. How many of you know what it means when a company says it's 100% renewable? Does it mean that they no longer rely on fossil fuels to power their operations? Well, let's take a look. This image represents a large data center facility, and it's associated 100% renewable energy purchases. The gray rectangle at the bottom of the image represents the facility's annual energy usage. It's fairly stable around the clock and throughout the year. The green layer on top represents the variable wind and solar that's been purchased to match this annual energy usage. It's easy 
to see the problem here. To reach a 100% renewable energy match, there are many hours in the day and year when the wind and solar is generating far more electricity than the facility needs. And the flip side is also true. There are many hours of the day and year when the renewables are not enough. The facility relies directly on power from the grid, which in most markets today still comes in large part from coal and natural gas. So what do you think? Is it enough for a company to claim that it's 100% renewable? It's clear that there's more to the story. While corporations have seen incredible progress in helping to scale wind and solar, the vast majority of that work has been done in a vacuum, outside of the operational constraints of the utility system. Corporations pursue their renewable energy goals as an accounting exercise, figuring out how much energy they used in a given year and matching it with purchases of wind and solar, regardless of the timing or the location of those investments. But if your utility operating the electric grid, timing and location is everything. Think about it. You flip a switch and the lights turn on instantly. Now multiply that by every home, office, and factory across the globe every hour of every day. That's the scale of electricity in our lives. The US power grid consists of over 150 million miles of power lines and serves over 160 million customers. We rely on the power grid for electricity on demand for nearly every aspect of our lives. It powers our homes, our hospitals, our servers, and our schools. Electric utilities often operate as regulated monopolies and are given the incredibly important responsibility of ensuring that the lights stay on and that power remains affordable for our communities. As a result, innovation can take a back seat. And while our utilities are now pursuing their own decarbonization objectives, they are still heavily reliant on fossil fuels. This map highlights the states with the greatest concentration of electricity generation from fossil fuels. As you can see, we have a lot of work to do. In 2023, 32 states relied on fossil fuels for over half of their electricity generation. And 14 states were over 75% fossil powered. As corporations celebrate achieving 100% renewable energy goals, we need to ask ourselves whether it's enough. If we don't close the gap between corporate renewable energy investment and utility operations, we risk stalling the energy transition and falling behind in the fight against climate change. We need to find new ways to work together if we're going to meet our climate targets. We need a new business model. I spent the last few years working with stakeholders across the industry, with utilities, regulators, and companies to figure out how to enable us to work together on this shared challenge. The result, a new type of electricity rate called the Clean Transition Tariff. What separates the Clean Transition Tariff, or CTT, from existing corporate purchase agreements is that it is grounded first and foremost in the operational realities of the system. At its core, it's a partnership between company and utility to identify the clean energy resources that can be brought to the system to complement what the utility is bringing on its own and to accelerate the energy transition. By working together, aligning corporate capital with utility operations, the CTT unlocks greater value for the system and greater rewards for the customer through credits against their electricity bill. Through the CTT, corporate climate leaders can invest in advanced new technologies and reap rewards on their energy bill to offset some of that higher cost. And because affordability is so critical to the well-being of our communities, 
the CTT structure ensures that families, small businesses, and other grid customers do not see any increase in their electricity bills. Today, technologies like enhanced geothermal, advanced nuclear, and long duration energy storage are expensive, just like wind and solar were in 2010. The CTT provides the pathway for corporate climate leaders to accelerate their commercialization, making these technologies more widely available and cheaper for everyone. I wanna tell you a story of how the CTT can rapidly bring a new clean technology from pilot to scale. In 2021, we announced a partnership with Fervo Energy to support development of its first pilot scale enhanced geothermal project. With that support, Fervo was able to successfully bring that project online two years later in the fall of 2023. Today, Fervo's project is supplying three and a half megawatts of clean power to Nevada's grid around the clock. That's enough to power a little more than 2,000 homes. Building on the success of Fervo's pilot, we wanted to explore opportunities for scale, but there was no model to facilitate that investment. This is where our CTT partnership with the local utility, Envy Energy, comes in. Through the Clean Transition Tariff, we are able to support technology innovation by unlocking the full power value of that resource through our electricity rate. Our partnership with Envy Energy will bring us from a three and a half megawatt pilot to a 115 megawatt commercial scale project, expected online in 2030. Projects like this are proving that the next generation of clean energy technologies is ready, but they need more investment to scale. Just as leading companies helped to scale wind and solar in the 2010s, we can do it again for the next generation of clean energy technologies. The solutions we need to build a cleaner energy grid are already here, but to succeed, we need bold leadership strategic partnerships, and the will to act now. Here's what it's going to take. We need corporate climate leaders to move beyond 100% renewable matching. We need to focus on 24-7 hourly operations and invest in partnerships through the clean transition tariff to accelerate new technologies. We need utilities and regulators to open your doors to innovation collaborate with companies and investors to bring these technologies online. We need investors to put your capital where it counts, back new clean technologies that we need to make sure that the grid is clean and reliable. Imagine this, what if every major company that prides itself on climate leadership committed to investing through the clean transition tariff? What if the next $100 billion of corporate clean energy investment went to accelerating new technologies? What if every utility embraced these partnerships to build a grid that runs on clean energy 24-7? What we do in the next decade will determine whether we build a future powered by clean energy or lock ourselves into a system that fails us when we need it most. We have the tools, we have the technology. What we need now is the will to act together. Thank you.